Um, so you said you you do your research in HIV cellular immunology, and you started that from PhD and postdoc, and I'm assuming also part of your work in um, UTH in Zambia was on HIV immunology. So I wanted to know why exactly did you choose to focus on that area? Yeah, so I, I, I think right from college, I just fell in love with immunology. I think immunology is a beautiful science. It's a very logical science. Everything kind of makes sense. And it's really at the center of everything. If you think about infectious diseases, you think about just general wellness, you think about um, uh, cancer, you think about aging, every facet of, the, of your health and, and, and the infectious disease has something to do with immunology. So understanding how the immune system functions uh, gives you a better um, understanding of how you know, a vaccine would work, how drugs work, how immunotherapies work and all that. I was particularly interested in T cell immunology because I was interested in viruses. And so intracellular pathogens, um, they're mostly you know, uh, the immune system that is most important in controlling intracellular pathogens are T cells, particularly CD8 T cells, direct killing of infected cells and CD4 T cells in terms of helping the B cell responses as well as the CD8 T cell responses. Okay, thank you. So when a lot of us think of HIV and cellular immunology, we kind of exclude CD4 T cells completely. And like you said, you want, you're doing research on CD8 T cells. So I wanted to know um, how has your research contributed to an improved understanding of both CD8 and CD4 T cell um, immunology in the context of HIV? Yeah, so um, so initially, like you said, uh, for my PhD, for my postdoc, the focus was on CD8 T cells. And so one of the challenges, of course, when you're transitioning from a postdoctoral fellowship to an independent PI is to distinguish yourself from your supervisor. So I was trying, and my supervisor is a giant in the field. He's really a big guy when it comes to CD8 T cells and HIV. So it casts a much larger shadow. So for you to be able to distinguish yourself, you know, it, it, it's not very easy, but thankfully is very supportive and it recognizes those kinds of issues. So together with him, you know, we kind of strategize on how I can actually carve out my own niche and so one of the things I did was to start looking at CD4 T cells and also to pivot to looking at immune responses in tissues. And so coming to your question in terms of CD4 T cells, um, there's always been debate in the field as why whether CD4 T cells are important in immune protection against HIV. And indeed they are because um, the notion that they are directly infected and if you uh, increase their frequencies, then you feel the infection it really is not very true. Because if you look at the cells that are actually infected in vivo, the CD4 T cells that are carrying HIV are very, very low. But the, the function of CD4 T cells in terms of helping these other arms of the immune response uh, is very, very important. And then they, CD4 T cells themselves have a direct uh, antiviral role and we've published a paper showing that actually in people that naturally control HIV, uh, CD4 T cells play a very, very important role in, in actually having a anti direct antiviral function against HIV. Okay, thank you for that clarity. Um, so we have gotten to a stage where air, um, antiretro antiretroviral treatment can induce some sort of functional cure in a lot of individuals. And we're trying to understand the, how the viral the, the viral replication and the immunology can kind of create some sort of clue to having potential cures. So um, we recently wrote a summary on how individuals or researchers studied elite controllers and tried to understand how the viral um, reservoir is formed and how it can potentially be targeted for um, clearance of viruses. So I wanted to know if you conduct research on elite controllers, and if you do, um, give a bit of oversight, an overview on what elite controllers are and why they're important um, to the field of HIV immunology. Okay, um, I don't work directly on HIV elite controllers at the moment, 
but I, I, I'm knowledgeable enough because that's really the area that I worked on for my postdoctoral fellowship. So, um, so elite controllers, uh, if for the people that may not fully understand, is that these are very rare group of individuals, less than 1% of people that are infected with HIV in the world control HIV naturally without any medication. They have undetectable viral load, they have normal CD4 counts, and they don't progress for many, many decades. Um, and they've been studied heavily because uh, the idea is to really understand how they control the virus and whether we can learn for that and uh, for vaccine design purposes. And so what has been shown, uh, particularly in terms of the, the immune system and how they work, and that's where we published a number of papers, is that the CD8 T cell responses is important in that control. And then when it comes to your question of, of the reservoir, um, because the immune system is so efficient at controlling HIV, it, it, it kills most of the virus that is there in their body, except for you know, the virus that is integrated in the genome in places where the virus has no chance of reactivation because it is in, in, in the gene regions that are not naturally expressed. They don't express any genes. And mm -hmm. uh, a recent paper in, Sci uh, in Nature actually published by a group here at the Reagan Institute showed that actually in some of these people, they are actually functionally cured because these there's they have no detection of virus whatsoever. When you try to re-stimulate your cells, the virus is not produced. And 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 the, the major role, the major mechanism is, is is thought that by which they control is through a CD8 mediated response. Coming to the cure question, so that's the area that I'm most interested in myself. But um, we've been looking at people that we treat very early during acute HIV infection. And, and looking to see where the virus persists uh, besides the, the peripheral blood. And so we've been looking at lymphoid tissues because we know they are major reservoirs. And we've demonstrated that the virus does persist in those areas, especially in lymph node follicles for a long, long time, because those places are out of reach uh, by, by CD8 T cells. And so the, the, the thought is how can we actually manipulate CD8 T cells to be able to access those areas of uh, um, uh, where the virus, where the immune system does not necessarily go to try and get them there so that they can clear the virus. Okay, thank you for that um, very good overview. Um, as you know, pandemic has made, caused a lot of restrictions in terms of travel in and out of countries and also within our own countries. I wanted to know how has COVID, um, the COVID-19 pandemic affected your research and how you interact with your students? Yeah, so this has been a strange year. I, I've been particularly affected by coronavirus myself because uh, when it happened, I was in the US, I was visiting the US, I was supposed to be here for a month because I do come back and forth. I still have my uh, appointment here in Boston and then everything shut down. So I got stuck here and my group is in South Africa. So we had to readjust very quickly like everybody else. And so we've been relying on, on this online video conferencing to really uh, continue the work uh, in my group. And it has worked well so far because we also jumped on the bandwagon and tried to contribute our knowledge and expertise in the area of, of uh, COVID-19 research. And so we started uh, a project to try and understand immune responses, CD4, CD8 T cell responses to coronavirus uh, in people with or without HIV co-infection. And so we've done that in more than 70 patients now, and we're just in the process of analyzing the data. So it has all happened in remotely. I'm in Boston and my group is in, in, uh, in, in, in Durban. I have an awesome, very talented group of young people that uh, just have done a phenomenal job. It's amazing. Now, that's really great um, that your group can still achieve this and you're still um, stuck to your core um, immunology research and trying to connect COVID-19 and HIV. That many people are trying to do that and just focusing solely on COVID-19. So it's really great to hear. 